Grace and peace to you. It's Monday, January 11th. We continue with one candle, Christ's light among us. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Welcome to this time of prayer. My name is Kay Huggins, and I'm the parish associate at Second Presbyterian Church in Albuquerque, New Mexico. This is a gathering of close friends from Second Presbyterian, as well as those whose names we do not know. At various times throughout the day, we form a circle of prayer. Thank you for joining in this circle of prayer today. Your prayers are a treasure that enrich our service to God. If you want to know more about our practice, read the weekly welcome posted every Monday on the on Seconds webpage. But all you really need to know is this. The world desperately needs our prayers. And so let us begin with a prayer based on the Psalm of the day, Psalm 145. The refrain is, I will bless you day after day and praise your name forever. Let us pray. Lord God, unite our voices with the praise of all creation, that we may worthily magnify your excellent greatness through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I will bless you day after day and praise your name forever. Today we begin a serial reading of the Gospel of Mark, and I need to warn you, the pace is swift. There will read 13 voices and go through seven major events. The impression of this beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ is something like a cosmic explosion. Listen carefully. The pace is swift, and a lot happens. Mark 1, 1 through 13. The beginning of the good news about Jesus Christ, God's Son, happened just as it was written about in the prophecy of Isaiah. Quote, Look, I am sending my messenger before you, he will prepare your way, a voice shouting in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make his path straight. Now John was preaching in the wilderness, calling for people to be baptized to show they were changing their hearts and their lives and wanted God to forgive them of their sins. Everyone in Judea and all the people of Jerusalem went out to the Jordan River and were being baptized by John as they confessed their sins. Now John wore clothes made of camel's hair and a belt around his waist. He ate locust and wild honey, and he announced, One stronger than I is coming after me. I am not even worthy to bend over and loosen the strap of his sandal. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with Holy Spirit. About that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee, and John baptized him in the Jordan River. And while Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens splitting open and the Spirit like a dove coming down on him. And there was a voice from heaven, and it said, You are my son, in whom I, you are my son, whom I dearly love. In you I find happiness. At once, the Spirit forced Jesus out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness for 40 days, tempted by Satan. He was among wild animals, and the angels took care of him. If your ears were alert, you may have noticed something. Every time Jesus is mentioned, 
so is the Spirit. The text connects Jesus with a baptizing with the Holy Spirit yet to come, with his own experience of the Spirit coming down from an opened heaven, with the Spirit forcing him into the wilderness to be tempted by Satan. When we ponder this association of spirit with Jesus, we understand that Mark wants us to view Jesus in a very particular way. He wants us to see Jesus as the one who bears the spirit into the world. Now, to set it in context, remember that the religious community of Israel had been hungering for a prophetic, spirit-filled voice for about four centuries. And there had been no prophet in the land. Then with the itineration of the baptizing ministry of John the Baptist, many began to hear the spirit speaking through John. That same spirit said, according to John, the one who comes next, the one for whom I am preparing the way, will actually baptize people with Holy Spirit. And then the skies split open. The Greek word here is powerful, dramatic, loud. And the spirit is visualized as a dove descending a messenger of peace. The confirmation of Jesus as the chosen one is beautiful in our imagination, but in John's gospel, the beauty turns forceful as Jesus is driven by the Spirit into the wilderness to face temptation. Now that's a story that gives us pause and I believe leads us to pray. So let us do so, beginning with the prayers for Monday. We praise you, God our Creator, for your handiwork in shaping and sustaining your wondrous creation. Especially we thank you for the miracle of life and the wonder of living, for particular blessings coming to us in this day for the resources of the earth, the gifts of creative vision and skillful craft, and for the treasures stored in every human life. We dare to pray for others, God our Savior, claiming your love in Jesus Christ for the whole world and committing ourselves to care for those around us in his name. Especially we pray for the many who work for the benefit of others today. For those who cannot, will not work today. For those who teach and those who learn. For people who are poor and for the church in Europe. God of grace and God of glory, we are a people continually in need of your spiritual refreshment. After a week of tension and disruption, we enter this week stunned and sober. Therefore, we ask your grace and glory to refresh us spiritually, and we open ourselves to such refreshment by recalling the joys expressed among us. A granddaughter in Austin playing in snow for the first time. A discovery of angels on earth, also known as nurses. For the many who have recovered from COVID, be they newborns or 90-year-olds. For a report of a whole family testing negative after an exposure. For the expression of gratitude from Florida for, pra from, for prayers from Second Press. For libraries being open and friends gathering on Zoom. For new recipes to try and puzzles to piece together and chess moves to ponder. For these and many, many other delights, we thank you for embedding joy within these stressful times. But alongside the joy, our concerns continue. 
for families, individuals, and all dealing with illnesses, treatments, testing, slow decline. We pray for John, Carmen, and Gabe, for Rick and Marie, for Ruth, for Richard M., for Lena, for Victor and his son Keith with cancer, for Ella's son-in-law's family with several cases of COVID, for Don and Jane's second son now diagnosed with COVID, for all who are mourning, whether deaths are recent or long since passed, for the many who are anxious and frightened about their health, and for all whose hope and patience has worn thin. God of all of our days and nights, grant healing, health, peace, and comfort as needed. We pray for our nation, for the violence that is close to the surface, and for the hurtful anger deep in human hearts. Renew us as people devoted to the welfare of all and help us cherish and extend peace as we begin a new season in our national life. Pour out your spirit upon our leaders, elected and appointed, on all civil servants, on all military and medical service workers, and may we who receive their many generous gifts be grateful for all that we have in our national structures and systems. We continue to ask your blessing on all medical workers whose days are long, whose rest is slight, whose risks are continual, and whose care of others is precious. Bless them all. We name those we know and love. Carla, Nicole, Cassie, Sandra, Camilla, Feliz, Tilda, Karina, Emiko, Pat's daughter Toby, together with her husband Boyd, Pat's brother Arthur, who is Sandra's cousins, Melinda and Marshall, work directly with COVID patients. Bless them, one and all. Now, dear Lord, hear us as we pray, as Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debtors, as we forgive. Forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace through the power of the Holy Spirit. Let the people say, Amen. Bless the Lord. Let the people say, The Lord's name be praised. And now as God's own beloved child, as brother or sister of in Christ's family, remember who you are today and the spiritual force that is alive within you. You have been baptized by Holy Spirit, and that's the motivation for all the good that you do. Remember the refrain from Psalm 145, I will bless you day after day and praise your name forever. And now until we pray again, keep these words from St. Paul to the church in Corinth in mind. Stay awake. Stand firm in your faith. Be brave. Be strong. Everything should be done in love. <laughs>